Tēnei rā hantu nō te aroa, ka haere ki Gunworks Canterbury i o tautahi. Tēnā e te whānau, kua hokana te tahi rai whara rua rau pitu te kaumoku, a kua tai mai te ronga mo te tahi tohunga whakapuku i te tangi rai whara, a rā, ko Robbie Tiffin. And how's the old 270 coming along, man? Oh, 270 is not too bad. We had it five days or so, and we've just about finished it, so it should be ready to take away for a half. I actually thought you'd just ring up and tell them your model and your, your calibre and they send you one from the shelf. Not quite that simple, no. These are all custom made by uh, our craftsmen here at Gunworks and um, we want me to take you through the process. Yeah, the mate, I'd love to see it. First of all, I'll get you to put the safety glasses on because we don't want those eyes right. getting any swore from Kua what we have here is Mark completing the threading job on the muzzle of this rifle and is doing a careful crown. And the crown's very important because it's where the bullet exits the muzzle and is most likely to be upset by the by the cloud of gas that uh, occurs around the bullet as it uncorks. So he's running a special uh, bush on the barrel thread, which means we don't have to touch the barrel with any moving parts, so we don't mark the rifle while we're doing it. And the same you'll see at the other end, at the, at the chuck end, there's a false bolt that goes into the receiver that's clamped by the machine. So at no point do we actually clamp the rifle. And so that's pretty important when we don't want to put a mark on, on the uh, you know, finish of the, of the weapon. do is we bore out the rear cap, like so, until it stops on a particular mark that we want on the barrel. If we look at a finished one, or a partially completed one, we've got our rear cap stopping at that particular size, the barrel isolator tube coming in over the barrel, the internal muzzle brake, which is what vents the gas to the rear and makes the overbarrel suppressor work, fits into that isolator tube and then onto the thread that Mark's just finished and screws up until the muzzle brake stops on its shoulder and the net result is to sandwich that isolated tube quite tightly on its barrel taper and the muzzle brake shoulder. You said something about gas, what, what's the gas about? It's gas what makes the noise? It's gas that makes the noise, yep. The gas leaving the muzzle at, um, above the speed of sound makes a, a, a very loud sonic crack, an explosion in the air. And so what we're trying to do with the muzzle brake is to take, uh, uh, the, let the bullet through the centre of it, but to tap the gas off and send that back towards the firer in the rear part of the suppressor body. And so that means that we can have a suppressor that's a lot shorter than they were in the old days, where it was all muzzle forward. So the suppressor would be at the end of the barrel and go forward um, 12 to 14 inches forward, which was impractical for hunting. By going to the overbarrel system, we use the the wasted space between the muzzle and the forend of the stock to store gas momentarily and that means we made a shorter stack of baffles to deal with the overflow of gas. Well Harry, what we've got here is uh, Matt putting the baffles into the uh, front of the suppressor. The muzzle brake has been put in place and we'll find uh, that we use two different weights of baffles if you have a feel of the, the weight of those. There's uh, a couple of heavy baffles in for a start to take the muzzle blast, so uh, high pressure and heat uh, striking the first baffles and they can distort. So we use heavy, heavy there to save distortion and then to save weight we fill in the rest with the lighter baffles. And they're spaced apart about 10 to 12 millimetres and there's a stack of them going forward so that the gas that the muzzle brake hasn't coped with, throwing the gas to the rear, these baffles now take over and stop the gas exiting above the speed of sound. So the shooter doesn't get baffled? Well, some of the shooters are probably a bit baffled, but uh, they will have no problems with you. From there, we'll get torqued up. And that's the suppressor pretty much done. Now, metal.
take it through to be engraved. Thanks, Matt. Well, here we go, Howie. This is the um, basically our finished product. It's a little bit uh, different to your one, but it's a uh, gunwork suppressor. We always put gunworks on the side of the suppressor, and we do that at 3 o'clock as you look down the barrel. That means the suppressor comes loose while you're in the field. You can quickly check and see that the gunwork's lettering is at 3 o'clock. If it's turned away, then you know the suppressor's come loose. So have I got Howie on my one? You could have Howie. Uh, Matt was going to put something else on it, but we won't discuss that. Do they all come black? Or... He mea pango, he mea hiriwa, he mea koura hoki e waihanga hi ana e gunworks. Engari, ta Robbie, i aki aki ai ki a whakamahi te mea pango ki a kau e kanapanapa i te rā, ka whakararu i ou mahi aruaru. Hei ta Robbie hoki me tia kina ngā tapu tapu nei i a te kau mano pupuhitanga kei paruparu hare o roto i te wahanga pūtanga o ngā matā. Tēnā, ti tiro mai whānau. This one here is one that missed the cleaning cycle and it's gone uh, 20,000 rounds. And you can see it's a solid block of carbon. It's nearly 70 pounds of powder. It's been fired through that suppressor in 2D3. Muzzle brake is um, starting to wear now at this point and wouldn't be worth using. 20,000 rounds is a lot of ammunition. It's a lot of back seats, mate. Mm. This, um, this one here is off, off a helicopter on um, animal control that we suspect fired around the 20,000 mark. We turn the outer tube off it to um, get it apart and to to uh, show you what the story is. Interesting to see there's actually no corrosion on the aluminium, which is um, which is good. Come on, mate. Don't keep me in suspense. Show us my new rival. Right here, Howie. Here's your new 270. It's sent down to us. Have a feel of that. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? That's right. Might have to send it to the gym and build those arms up. You reckon? You reckon? The, um, the way we fit them, we've got the little knurled tread protector cap here. We'll take that off. Don't lose those because they're all made specially for the rifle. Every barrel is different on its size, so we have to make them individually and have them anodized. Suppressor itself, we've given you a Duralium one, which is the lightweight, high strength body, but with the stainless steel internal brake. So that will weigh around the 350 gram mark. Screw it on, simply put it on like so, feel for the thread start, and then just run her up to the thread. We like to flick them on like that, so then they're on quite tight using the knurling. And you'll see the engraving that uh, Chico, or Matt, was doing before as, uh, comes up to 3 o'clock on the rifle as you're looking at it. And so if the suppressor comes loose for any reason, you'll see that the writing is turned away. And that's about it. Have a feel of that. You'll hardly notice the weight on the front of the rifle. No, it's a choice, mate. Mm. That's really awesome. Now, noise reduction... Generally with a high velocity suppressor, we say it takes about two thirds of the bang away. So there's still a significant bang, around 22 magnum sort of noise. But you'll notice a recoil reduction of about half, and that's uh, from that muzzle brake, that stainless steel muzzle brake that we saw, taking the gas out those three vents and hitting its front face tends to pull the weapon forward against the recoil that's occurring. So you find it very comfortable to fire. Choice, mate? Just as long as I don't miss it. You won't miss with that thing. Otherwise I'll send it back to you. <laughs> No worry. So, Farno, if you want to get a suppressor fitted on your rifle, ring on Rob. He's situated in Christchurch, Gunworks, Canterbury. He's the man. Thanks, Eric. Hey, buddy. Right. Where you have.